the water teaches us so much. It can be very powerful. It can give us strength, but it also provides the knowledge and wisdom of how to live with, but also how to live without. This landscape has changed over time in so many ways. To see water began to deplete, to leave the water lines of where it used to be. It tells us a story of, of when it was here and when it's left us too. We see a lot of changes with our wildlife and how they move, but it also reminds us who we are as Ute people. And to acknowledge that, and to say we're still here says we can do this. We're not gonna be able to create water. So we need to adapt to that future. And we need to start thinking about, well, when we do lose flow, how do we keep water in the river? A couple years ago, the decrease in the water supply was so drastic, we ended up selling or leasing over 90% of our herd to reduce our stocking rate so we didn't overgraze the pastures. So that was kind of a reset button for our operation that really let us rethink how we should be moving forward and not be reliant on practices that worked in 1970. Slowing water down in the system makes an awful lot of sense. If the water could take a little more time working through the system, we could probably see a lot more benefit from it. We installed swales along the contour of the field so that would slow down any surface runoff and allow it to infiltrate, basically slowing water down in the system. It's a very cost-effective and time-efficient way to help improve the soil quality and grow more forage. Well, our ranch is trying to be a demonstration point where we can collect data about the swales working or not or how effective they are and perhaps try in a bunch of other places. I think agricultural producers are stewards of the land and all the resources. That's a really important job. The land needs to be healthy so that it supports healthy ecosystems. You should always leave things a little better than you found it. And downstream users will appreciate that. The Mancos River in the lower reaches support three species of warm water fish. We have seen them in really low numbers. We've been experiencing more frequently this reach of the river drying up. We know that beavers are a really important uh, species to the system. Beaver dam analogs are just a way that we can kind of mimic a natural process. Beavers have been on this landscape for a really long time we can kind of create an infrastructure for them so that it supports what they're naturally doing on our reach, but also gives them more chance of success to really, really establishing here. As a land manager, it's really important to be involved with watershed scale work because we're just a small piece of this puzzle. Management decisions that are made here are important to the land here, but they're also important to the river as a whole. There's so many other things at play than just what goes on on a Mesa Verde National Park. This canyon plays a big part in new culture. This uh, cottonwood tree here is like a landmark to us you people. We use these cottonwoods here, these bigger trunks. We hollow the inside, put elk or deer hide over it, and that could make a drum. Uh, we never waste the cottonwood. We'll cut up use for ceremonial wood for our sweat lodges or our peyote meetings. What it means to have healthy plant communities also shares with us the demonstration of balance within our environment. When we start to see those depletions and the absence of that, something's wrong. And then we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing? What can we do to help? bring those back. The very first step we started on this restoration project was tamarass removal, cleaning up the debris. Then after we got the tamarass removal, we did a herbicide. We start 
planting the seedlings, the native plants. After that, we did the willow planting. A healthy river is what I've seen with no tamaracks, no invasive species. I want the generation behind me to see what I see. Makes you feel good when you see something like that spiritually. It takes people like me, educate them, bring them out here and show them this is what we have, this is what we need to do to take care of it. Then from there, they can pass that down generations to come. We can honor traditional ecological knowledge and Western science by learning to braid them together because one will validate the other. We're living in the same space. We're all humans. Water is life. I think it's really hard for us to manage alone and manage separately. Good ideas come from many minds and we can all learn from one another. You know, projects that are happening here in Mesa Verde and projects that are happening all across the watershed on private land and in the tribal park. We're really excited about all of these projects because it's an opportunity for us to, to learn from them. Ecologically, we, we have to protect all of these resources, not just for the sake of the resource, but for the sake of the system. Because if one link in the chain breaks, it all starts falling apart. So we need to maintain a healthy system all around so that if there is water available, it can go on to the next user and be good clean water like we expect. Whenever there's an abundance, there's an abundance and, and all can share. A healthy river, I think is a good indicator for a healthy community.